And away we go to estimation of the population mean. Which is a fancy word to say confidence intervals, our next step. Now we're doing the actual estimation stuff. We started off with the central limit theorem, which uh, we built upon the normal distribution, and that sets our foundation for our confidence interval calculations, and then next our hypothesis testing. So we've now set, set the stage. We're trying to estimate, the, in this case and in this section, the mean, and we'll use that by means of a confidence interval, which again depends on the central limit theorem. There are really two forms to this confidence interval and two forms only. Remember, we're estimating the mean. You see the little x bar there, right? And essentially, that means we're basing it either off of the standard normal distribution, yeah, at which the standard deviation of that mean is sigma over the square root of n, just like what we saw when we were talking about the central limit theorem. And, or if we do not know the population standard deviation, we estimate it with s over the square root of n, and we use a t-distribution. But again, look at the same form, format. We still have a, an estimation for the standard deviation of the mean, again, built all around the central limit theorem and the power of that particular theorem. Okay, so just two formulas here, but we We'll use them and interpret them, and uh, they're very useful, and we'll learn or relearn uh, when we saw each one. So our whole goal is we're trying, to, we're trying to estimate something we don't know, right? That's the whole essence of statistics. We're trying to estimate something that we currently do not know. Well, a lot of times, most of the time, it's the average of something or the mean of something. Eh, but we'll, we'll also deal with uh, estimating the variance, and by extension to the variance, the standard deviation. Okay. So, for instance, things that we can mean, mean, mean sales, mean price, mean gasoline mileage, that kind of thing. Okay. Average um, length of time a hard drive will last, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So the, uh, the thing that we're trying to estimate, the population parameter that we're trying to estimate that we do currently know, we call that the uh, target parameter. So the, the, the nice thing about confidence intervals is they provide us with two things. They provide us with an interval estimate or range of potential values. And that's quite important to us, right? A point estimator, limited value because we all know, you know, in a normal distribution, what's the probability you got that exactly right? Almost never, right? In fact, it is pretty much never if you get really, really picky about it. Uh, and so we got this interval estimate, so we think, hey, the average sales for next quarter will be between this and this. And then attached to that is our, our sort of our confidence level as to finding or actually getting a value in the next quarter between the, that range, right? And that's our confidence level, you know, like 95% confidence level you, you've seen in your first stats is a very, very popular one. And it just means that, hey, we're 95% confident that the uh, mean, right, the true mean will lie between this value on the low end and this value on the high end. And there's our confidence interval, right? Gives us a range of values and then some sort of guidance as to how confident we are that uh, our actual estimate falls between those two values or in that range. Okay, so we have two forms like we just saw, right? And there's just two forms for this confidence interval. It's either based on the normal distribution or the t distribution. And if you like to make your life easy, it's a simple rule. If you know the population standard deviation, use it. Therefore, you base everything off the, the Z distribution. If you don't know the population standard deviation, then you have to estimate it. And you base everything off the T distribution. The T distribution, as we will see, has little slightly fatter tails because we're estimating two things, right? We have to estimate the uh, standard deviation and we have to estimate the mean. And in that, in that case, you know, slightly fatter tails, um, greater chance that we might be out by a little bit. So, again, know the population standard deviation, Z distribution, don't know it, use the T distribution. Life is easy. If you want to get nuanced, and you're by no means obligated to do this, some people out there go, hey, if that N is greater than or equal to 30, central limit theorem applies, and you can use the Z distribution for everything. Uh, I mean, that, that's okay. A T is better. T will give you maybe a, 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 a I think, a, a uh, better depiction of the range of values, um, but 
that general principle is justifiable and, and it, it can hold up. Uh, but for us, I think it's probably easiest just to keep with the simple rule. Know the population standard deviation, do a Z, don't know it, do a T. Vast majority of the time, you will not know it. That's the way the real world goes. If Heck, if you knew all this stuff about the population parameter, guess what you wouldn't be doing? A whole bunch of statistics about the population parameters, right? So typically we don't know it. And uh, when in doubt, T is probably the way to go. Okay. So we still have our confidence interval for the mean, right? We, so we have, we have our standard deviation for the mean, which we saw uh, previously, right? Sigma over the square root of n. That still forms a, a, a very, the basis of our confidence interval. Now, there's a little bit of math, and you can go through this if, if you really like. But uh, essentially what it says is our confidence interval is sort of based on the probability that uh, our sample mean deviates from the population mean in a greater sense than what our confidence interval would predict. Uh, and that's where the 1.96 uh, times by sigma over square n comes in. We do a little bit of rearranging, and we get a the formula for a z value, and then now we can see how we or how we would look these up in in a table. Right. So we have a 95% confidence interval probability that it's in a tail. Remember, these are these are two-tailed confidence intervals. No, we typically are dealing with, and so if if ninety five percent is in the interval, five percent is in the tails. There are two tails, so point zero two five in each of the respective tails. Right, just uh, exactly the same as what you did in your first stats class. So you can you can kind of go through that if you like. It's not really a major part of it. It's just that recognize that we can then take that confidence interval, treat it as sort of like a pseudo probability, and then use that in order to find uh, the Z values that we need to incorporate into our confidence interval. Okay. But we can kind of see through this process here that we have an interval and that interval uh, can be equated with a, with a probability uh, that, 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 that any particular that interval that we're estimating uh, does contain the true yet unknown to us population mean. Okay. So we bring all that together and we get our formula for the confidence interval for the population mean. It's centered around the sample mean plus or minus some margin of error. That margin of error is all that stuff to the right of the plus minus, right? Z alpha over two times by sigma divided by square root n, that's our margin of error. The standard error of the estimate, that's just the sigma over the square root of n, exactly the same as in your first stats class. Okay. So just to say that again, the margin of error, that's that whole Z alpha over two times sigma times by, divide by, excuse me, the square root of n, that's the margin of error, it's plus, so we take the mean, the sample mean, plus or minus that margin of error, so plus that amount, and then for the lower bound, minus that amount. Uh, and, and, and there we go, and that's just our, our simple two, um, our, our two bound, our two bounded uh, confidence interval. Okay, and, and this will be centered around the z-score tables, and we'll find, uh, we'll look for the probability in the middle GUI part, find the associated z, plug it into the formula, right? So which z we use depends on the confidence interval that we prefer. So very similar to what we were doing, the very tail end of the central limit theorem uh, set of uh, questions and set of slides. Uh, so for instance, uh, at the tail end of those slides, we saw that a 90% confidence interval, that's where we had 5% in, in the tail, uh, corresponds to 1.645, 95%, 1.96, and so on. So 90%, let's see how that goes, right? So we, we think this through, we think, okay, 90% is in the confidence interval, that's the middle part, 10% uh, are in the tails, divide that by two because there are two tails, and we get 5% in each tail. 
okay? So that the probability that uh, we get a value less than this particular Z score that we're looking for is the 90% plus the 5% in the tail. So for a total of 95%. And then we look in our tables for 0.95 like we did uh, before and we see that's associated 1.64 1.65 or 1.645 in the middle. Same kind of thinking for the 95% confidence interval. 95% is in the middle. 5% is in the tails combined, which means 2.5% in each tail. Right? Probability we get less than a particular Z value is the 95 plus one of the tails. So 0.975 or 97.5%. We go back to the uh, Tables, looking in the middle part for 0 0.975. 975, where are you? There you are, bingo! 1.96, and we see that that corresponds to 1.96. Okay, So again, exactly the same as what you did in your first stats class. So now let's do an example. So in this particular example, uh, based predominantly on uh, real data, uh, according to Schmidt and Hunter, the standard deviation of output, uh, we will assume uh, it is the population standard deviation for now. It, it's, it's not, but we'll make that assumption for simplicity to begin with. It's 40% of the average value of a particular employee's output. Okay. If for a firm of uh, with 36 workers, the mean value of output is $40,000, uh, calculate a 95% confidence interval for the mean output for a typical employee. Okay, so we're assuming we know the population standard deviation, which means our world is going to be centered around uh, the normal distribution. All right, and I have the formula for the confidence interval for that normal distribution. My X bar is given to me from the sample of 40,000. My sigma is 40% of that, so 0 0.4, times by that 40,000, and that equals to 16,000, and n is a sample size of 36 workers. Okay. So the next thing is the name we need to know is alpha, then alpha over 2, and then finally the z alpha over 2. Okay. So if we're looking for a 95% confidence interval, that means our alpha 0 0.05, alpha over 2.025, and then the Z alpha over 2 will be uh, Z alpha, uh, Z 0 0.025. Okay, so how do we get that? So just uh, again, because I said it in words, and just to draw a little picture, we've got ourselves a 95% confidence interval, 95% observations in the middle. 5% in the tails, which means 0 0.025 uh, out there, uh, 0 0.025 0 in the other tail. And so we want this Z value, the minus Z value, we could have done it that way too, but as we saw, sometimes looking up in tables, looking for negative values is a little bit grief. And so we can do the Z and all the way below. To, to find the Z for this one, it's 97, 95, plus the 0 0.025, so we need to find the probability that it's, that uh, we, this value, the probability we get any random value below this unknown Z to us right now is 0.975. Okay, so we flip over to our, our tables. Yeah. And we're looking for that 0 0.975, which we see. There it is, 1.96. Okay. So Z off over 2 is 1.96. So now we can bring all these formulas together and we get 40,000 plus or minus that margin of error of 1.96 times by 16,000 divided by the square root of 36. Okay. Now, we'll find the, the margin of, of error 
uh, first uh, because it's kind of, kind of convenient so we can just go 40,000 plus that amount and 40,000 less than that amount and it's easier okay nice and it's nice and easy to understand and uh, we like we like things that are simple okay And so we'll get a margin of error that's uh, about uh, $5,226 and you know 67 cents ish okay so our upper bound will be that 40,000 plus the 5226.6667 uh, which is equal to 45 Two two six point six 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 seven, and the lower bound is that forty thousand again minus the fifty two twenty six point six 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 seven, and uh, then we, and for that one we get what do we get thirty four thousand seven seven three point. And then, then three, 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 three. Again, four digits, is four decimal spots is is plenty. Uh, I think anything more than that's goofy. Yeah, four is probably a little goofy here. We have a standard deviation of sixteen thousand, and and we're talking about ten thousandths of a cent. Uh, it sounds pretty silly when you say it out loud that way. Okay. So now we have our, our interval, and we can use that interval in in all sorts of uh, useful ways. Right? We can say, hey, could the mean be this value? For instance, somebody comes up to you and says, hey, oh, we're thinking uh, we did some stuff, uh, we did some analysis, and oh, it could be 42,000. Could that mean be 42,000? And you look and you go, hey, yeah, yeah. I mean, 42,000 lies in the interval. Could be. Can't say that it is because 43,000 lies in that interval too, right? But it could be certainly lack any evidence to suggest that you're wrong and so we have like our boilerplate language you know if the value 42,000 it lies in the confidence interval okay so it does and so we're 90 in this case we're 95 percent confidence that we do not have sufficient evidence to state that the value is not that one yeah. uh, it's a little clunky uh, because <laughs> We, we, we uh, have a sort of a tricky balancing act and we, we can't really say, we can't really accept that that is the mean. We can only either say that it could be or it's not, likely not. Uh, so as we'll, when we will see it in uh, hypothesis testing and, and the, the whole type one, type two error and accepting why we don't accept HO, we only reject or do not reject it. Is sort of lurking in the background um, when we start to come with maybe a little bit of the clunky English when that uh, 42,000 lies in the interval. Okay. So the 42,000 lies in the interval where it could be, it could be the mean. Right, and and we basically we're stuck saying we're 95% confident that we don't have any evidence to suggest otherwise. If someone like uh, jumps in and says, "Ooh, I think it could be forty-six thousand. I'm sure it's forty-six thousand. I think the mean is forty-six thousand. These folks are really producing, uh, and so forty-six thousand is the uh, is is the mean." And now we have our boilerplate language because that forty-six thousand lies outside the mean. Now we can say, "Hey, whoa, hold on. We're ninety-five percent confident that that." 46,000 is not the population mean. Of course, we can never say we're 100% certain of anything because it, there is a range of values that are outside that interval. But we're 95% confident that based on our data here that uh, 46,000 is not the population mean. Okay, and that's simply how that works. Thank you.